Over the weekend, a big story on Susan Sarandon hit The Guardian, titled, Susan Sarandon, I thought Hillary was very dangerous. If she'd won, we'd be at war. And of course that spun off a bunch of other pieces like this one from Salon saying, Susan Sarandon still can't admit we'd be better off with Clinton as president. But my favorite hot take was from news actress Joy Reid, who, before spending the day tweeting obsessively about Prince Harry's engagement, tweeted this. Susan Sarandon is not a feminist, anti-Obama, unbothered by Hollywood sexual harassment, and still convinced Hillary Clinton would have been more dangerous than Trump. My God, she's Phyllis Schlafly. And she added the link to the Guardian article. So I thought it might be fun to break down Joy Reid's tweet and see if there's any truth to it. Or... Is Joy Reid just painting Susan Sarandon in a way to make you discouraged from listening to her? Well, let's find out. So the first point is Susan Sarandon is not a feminist. So polling from the article in The Guardian, it says, A few years ago, Sarandon herself said, I think of myself as a humanist because I think it's less alienating to people who think of feminism as being a load of strident bitches. And then suddenly it became okay to say feminist. That's been very recent. There was a period when that wasn't really happening, so now there's been an opportunity to include men as allies. So far, there's no signs of anti-feminism. Now, before I get to the next quote, I want to remind you who Phyllis Schlafly is, because that's who Joy Reid called Susan Sarandon. So Phyllis Schlafly is a conservative who opposed feminism and abortion, and campaigned against the ratification of the Equal Rights Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. Now that last point is important. Phyllis Schlafly opposed the Equal Rights Amendment to the Constitution. Now, hear what Susan Sarandon had to say in the Guardian interview. I remember going to the Equal Rights Amendment march in 1978, where there were 100,000 women, and we were going around talking to senators for this vote, and I got in the elevator, and the women were like, we're going to show them what the fuck we want. And I kept saying, calm down, that's not the way we're going to get things done. But that image of the shrill woman became the definition of a feminist for a long time, and women had a right to be angry, and to feel empowered, but that was just one glimpse of a fairly emotional and strident definition. And there was a period when young women didn't want that label. So to compare Susan Sarandon to Phyllis Schlafly, who opposed the Equal Rights Amendment, where Susan Sarandon was actually at the march for it, is just absolutely ridiculous. And it shows you how disingenuous Joy Reid is. Now, let's go to her next point that Susan Sarandon is anti-Obama. Look what happened under Obama that we didn't notice. Hillary would have done it the way Obama did it, which was sneakily. He deported more people than have been deported now. How he got the Nobel Peace Prize, I don't know. I think it was very important to have a black family in the White House, and I think some of the stuff he did was good. He tried really hard about health care, but he didn't go all the way because of Big Pharma. So Sarandon's criticisms of Obama here are the same that a lot of people have that Obama ran on a message of hope and change in 2008. But once he got in, his cabinet was made up of people who were already rich insiders. And the actual, when it comes to issues like healthcare, he pushed what was essentially a right-wing healthcare plan from the 1990s, an insurance, a private insurance-based healthcare system. He didn't even push for the public option or for single payer. So yeah, these are just normal criticisms of Obama. Obama is a centrist. And when you're an actual leftist like Susan Sarandon, obviously you're gonna be disappointed in what Obama did. Now, let's go to the next point, that Susan Sarandon is unbothered by Hollywood sexual harassment. And this is one that with just a simple search, you could find an article posted by the New York Daily News that was posted a day before the Guardian article that states, Susan Sarandon says there are plenty more Hollywood predators out there that we haven't heard about yet. And in the article, she's quoted as saying, I am really furious with the people that enabled and delivered the girls to Harvey Weinstein, because I know there were agents and managers that didn't allow people to go to a hotel room for an interview or went with them. But even if you just want to retain your knowledge to what's in the Guardian piece, this is what Susan Sarandon says to the Guardian. Certainly, I experienced both having people come on to me and being told that I wasn't interesting enough to get a part or sexual enough once they found out I was married. In my case, I just said no in many clumsy, stupid ways, but the people didn't push on. They didn't show up in my room. They didn't corner me or batter me or get on top of me. It was an invitation. Yeah, why don't you spend the night now that you're here in the middle of nowhere on location? And I said, no, I got to get back to my room. 
but I didn't feel super offended because it wasn't a thing that became super difficult. So here, Susan Sarandon is clearly saying that she didn't have it as bad as other actresses did. How Joy Reid attaches that to her being unbothered by sexual harassment in Hollywood is beyond me. And really, it shows you, once again, how disingenuous Joy Reid is. Now, let's get to the next point, which she says, Susan Sarandon is still convinced Hillary would have been more dangerous than Trump. Once again, quoting from the Guardian article, did she really say that Hillary was more dangerous than Trump? Quote, not exactly, but I don't mind that quote, she says. I did think she was very, very dangerous. We would still be fracking. We would be at war if she was president. It wouldn't be much smoother. I got from Hillary people. I hope your crotch is grabbed. I hope you're raped. Misogynistic attacks. Recently, I said I stand with dreamers, and that started another wave of hate from Hillary supporters. So right off the bat, she says that no, she didn't say that Hillary is more dangerous than Trump. But at the same time, she's not bothered by that label because she still sees Hillary as a dangerous or would have been a potentially dangerous president. And I think it's fine for someone to have that opinion. But at the same time, she's not saying that Hillary Clinton is more dangerous than Trump. She's simply saying that Hillary Clinton is dangerous. Now, this last quote here, I think is the most important, and she really makes a great point. While I knew that New York was going to go for Hillary, it was probably the easiest place to vote for Green Party leader Jill Stein. Bringing attention to working class issues is not a luxury. People are really hurting. That's how this guy got in. What we should be discussing is not the election, but how we got to the point where Trump was the answer. And I think that's really the main takeaway here. How did it get to a point where people thought that voting for Donald Trump was a better option than voting for the status quo. And that answer is easy on one hand, and on the other hand, it's not easy. But the simple reason is people were hurting, as Susan Sarandon herself said in that quote. And the status quo hadn't been working for them for the past 30 years. And a lot of people felt like it was time for a change. And to them, as ridiculous as Donald Trump was as a candidate, to those people that voted for him, to a lot of them, he was that change. Now, I would say it was probably a bad change. <laughs> so there, it does get to a point where you can, be, you can get worse than the status quo by voting for a monster like Donald Trump. But for a lot of people who just aren't as informed on Donald Trump as a person and his history, or even what he's about, then you can understand why there was an eagerness to vote for a quote-unquote businessman that represented, in their minds, something different than the status quo. But obviously, we know he's in now. He's appointed people who are way worse than anybody Obama appointed to his cabinet, at least in my opinion. And Donald Trump is doing serious damage to the country. But that doesn't take away from anything that Susan Sarandon is saying here. So there are a lot of people that want to attack those, especially celebrities and people in media, who voted for Jill Stein. But those very same people, like Susan Sarandon, are in New York or California, states that would have voted for Hillary anyways, and did vote for Hillary. So them voting for Jill Stein is not that much of an issue as Hillary Clinton won their state regardless. So the whole idea of voting for the Green Party candidate Jill Stein was if she got to 5%, then that would have helped the party in the long term. But Jill Stein didn't, and that's fine. But at some point, we're going to see if the Democratic Party and the Republican Party continue doing the same things. We're going to see third parties rise up because people are tired of of this two-party system that only represents the wealthy and the people that already have power. 